Fancy winning a share of £5,000 this weekend? Check out Racing Post's new fun interactive game Fancy Five, where you could win a share of our massive cash prizes. So how do you play? Go to www.fancy5.com and click log in or register in the top right hand corner. If you're already a RacingPost.com member, you just need to enter your usual Racing Post login details. You can play the game for fun, for free, but if you want to win a share of the cash prizes, you'll need to purchase credits. It's £2.50 per credit, which equates to one entry in the competition. You can enter as many times as you want, and you can submit a new entry right up until five minutes before the last race of the day. The object of the game is simple, to get the highest scoring entry. Points are awarded for each selection based on a notional one pound win stake at SP. So if one of your selections wins at 10 to one, you'll get a total of 11 points. For each losing selection, you'll get one point deducted from your score. There are cash prizes for the top five finishers, and as a special launch week bonus, there are two free game credits for players ranked six to 100 at the end of the day, and one free credit if you end up in the top 200 at the close of play. So once you've registered and got your credits, it's a case of working out your selections. Remember though, you don't have to pick them all at once and can change them through the day. Keep track of the leaderboard. You can see the remaining selections of the leaders and depending on how things are going, switch to some bigger price selections. Remember, just one big price winner can quickly push your entry up into a share of the prize money. So you've registered, you've got your credits. How can you win the big prizes? Well, that's where Ed and Graham come in. And Ed, we know you best as a long shot tipster. Is that the strategy here? Just pick big priced horses? Yeah, I think this game's set up for, for long shots, really. Uh, probably a slightly biased opinion, but um, self explanatory in many ways. If you pick five, six to four shots and they all win, you, you're not going to find yourself anywhere near the leaderboard. Uh, you've only got to hit perhaps a couple 20 to one plus shots. Mm -hmm. And if it's your lucky day, it's your lucky day and you're going to find yourself right up in contention. So um, if you want one or two perhaps short to medium, like bankers is as such, yeah, go for them. But uh, it's a general rule. I'd say you want more double figure priced horses than single figure ones. Okay, so more double figure priced horses. Would that be the, the strategy for you, Graham? Um, well, that is a strategy I'm going to take. Yeah, I mean, I don't particularly agree that you want to flood it with long shots because you know, say you do hit a long shot, you hit a 50 to 1 chance, and then you're at the top of the leaderboard, and you've still got four runners to go, but they're all 50 to 1, you're probably not going to have another winner, are you? The likelihood is you're going to be overtaken. So I'll be looking to mix up my list with maybe a couple of uh, shorter price ones, and then try and blow it out of the water with a 50 to 1 maybe towards the end of the day when you can look at the leaderboard and, and see how you go in and see what you need to win. And is that the, the style as well, Ed? You, you don't want to just sort of put all your eggs in one basket straight away, maybe sort of choose some horses later in the day. That, that would be the, the way I look at it. And just one thing we should say is just avoid the bankers, the so-called even money shots. There's absolutely no point if mm -hmm. you select them, there's going to be however many thousand people have the same selections and you're not going to be getting any benefit. So yeah, the argument I would have would be sit it out early doors. If you fancy something in the opener at 25 to when you've been waiting for for a couple of weeks, whatever to run, you really fancy it, go for it. If not, I would let all the early skirmishes have their say and, and keep an eye on the leaderboard. Then, perhaps four or five o'clock in the afternoon, you know where you're at. Mm. And the big advantage as well is, especially with in England, like the change of weather, etc., you can respond to a lot more information. I always think it's best to act once you've got as much information to go on as possible. So if there's like a, a deluge or a downpour, there could be a going change. If you set your stall mm. out in the morning for fast ground horses, you then have to totally revamp them all to mud larks. Or there could be a particular draw bias that has become apparent by four o'clock in the afternoon. If horses all at one stand side are coming home, you then have to totally change your selections again. So I don't think there's any harm in waiting because you don't get any more prizes or any more money for picking the last five races of the day mm -hmm. as opposed to the first five. Yet yeah, towards the end of the day, you've got a lot more information to go on. So, And you know what level stakes you need to yeah, overtake you know. the leaders. So I would say, yeah. Pick big prices and be patient. And also important to keep a, a track of non-runners because you can replace your selections if, if they come out. Um, looking at Saturday then, we want some selections from you guys. Uh, we'll start with you, Ed, what are the five? Uh, five I'm going for is the 150 at Chester, Sly Fermenda, I believe it's pronounced. Uh, it's a good form in the course, it's drawn low. 
Um, I think could go well at a decent price. That would be the early doors, big price of trying to get my mm -hmm. name on the board. Um, I then wait an hour or so. Um, I think Borderless Scott, we're trading currently around the 14 to 1 mark ish. Um, for a horse of his ability, if he puts it all in, he's not a 14 to 1 shot. So I think he, he's a live one at a price. Um, well, one that I'm going to wait and see uh, adopting that tactic is Montaf in the 310. His only win as a two year old came on heavy ground. He ran his best race last year on really testing ground when he came uh, came placed by an opinion poll. Uh, so they forecast rain in the area at York tomorrow. So for the 310, Montaf, I'll play a wait and see mm -hmm. game with him depending on the weather. Um, probably my best long shot would be in the, the 340, which is Hotham. Yeah, he's got a great record at the track, so two wins there. Now seven pound below his last winning mark, so he's handicapped to run well. Uh, I think he's around 33 to one. Um, and then in the evening, the one that get out of jail one, hopefully is Hazar of um, Barry Hills. Hasn't won for three years and put much people off, but so well handicapped in old form now. And it doesn't look the strongest of races. So that would be the one that um, hopefully if I'm up in contention, the 7.05 in the evening would be the one to uh, steal the glory. So. OK, and Graham, your five and why? Um, well, I can't say that I'm particularly worried about time too much because I honestly think the far back five winners in this competition are win. So I'm keeping it pretty simple. Uh, best horses and best jockeys. Um, I like backing good jockeys on big priced horses because they're not often riding them for a reason. Um, for no reason, sorry. Uh, Rose Blossom is the one that I like against Overdose. And you've got to be taking on Overdose in this competition. I mean, he's massive over -hypes. You know, he comes from... Um, Hungary, who knows how good he is, who knows how good his form is. I mean, he might be blasting away everything in Europe, but Rose Blossom's seriously fast filly, and I'll be quite surprised actually if Overdose is fast enough to lead her up. She disappointed last time at York, uh, but she got badly bumped at the start, so I think she's a good um, a good one at a big price. But I'll be looking to shore things up, like I've, I'm going to start off with Take 10, or I think I might be favourite in the first at Goodwood. Um, Frank and Tory's down to ride that one for Godolphin. Hitchens in the in the big race at the Curra, the, the sprint race, uh, ran really well last time, full firm in the Duke of York. And David Barron actually says that he thinks that's a, a Group 2 performer. And David Barron ain't one of these trainers who comes out and says that unless he thinks it and, you know, he knows it the time of day. Um, and Confessional is a big price, um, who I'm going to go for in the 340 at York. Uh, that's run well twice from poor draws on its last two starts at Beverly. And Chester, and then I'm going to finish off pretty early compared to Ted, who's finishing at at 7:05. But you know, I, I don't like to watch lead balls. I, I I'll be turning off and praying that that I do end up in front at the end uh, with Sutton Veeney in the 405 at Haydock. I think he's going to be about 10 to one. Ryan Moore's riding that for Jeremy Gask, um, and then that'll be all my selections out of the way. I'll be sitting back with my cigar out and my feet up on the couch, uh, waiting to collect my five grand. Excellent. Well, great stuff, uh, guys. Good luck. Whatever you're on at home as well, do uh, give it a go, www.fancy5.com.